With us from uh, Kiev now is a Parliament member, Ina Sovsun. Good evening to you. Good evening. First of all, how is it going in Kiev right now? Well, uh, we are under curfew now. Uh, we do have uh, all the lights off, so I'm actually now uh, in the wardrobe uh, because we cannot turn, turn the lights on in the uh, in the rooms. Uh, we it is relatively quiet. We only hear rare explosions uh, uh, once or twice a day here, but uh, the situation in other cities is much more difficult. Uh, the situation in my native city of Kharkiv, uh, second biggest city in Ukraine. Uh, two million people uh, heavily bombarded uh, from air by Putin uh, for the last uh, three days now. I'm getting desperate messages from people hiding in bunkers in underground stations over there. And uh, they just, uh, uh, yeah, that is just terrible, blowing up the whole city center. I saw bombs blowing up like five minutes walk from my school. That's just terrible what they're doing to Kharkiv right now. And then they're also uh, doing some advances on the south of Ukraine. So they claim to have taken over the control of the city of Kherson. I believe there will be major battles taking place there. Uh, but then uh, they also hit in randomly in different uh, cities or towns all over Ukraine. Just two hours ago, we got the information that they hit, uh, another missile hit a um, whole residential building in the city of Chernihiv, which is north of, uh, of Kiev, with 33 people claimed dead in just that one attack. So uh, they just destroyed in Ukraine, particularly from air, despite all the efforts of the Ukrainian army, which is doing an amazing, amazing job um, fighting on the ground. But those airstrikes are just killing so many people, and uh, uh, they're just uh, creating such a strong uh, fear among the people uh, here in Ukraine. Um, so that is the situation as it is of today. Mm -hmm. We are going into second week of war. Yeah. Oh, well, first of all, uh, thank you very much for taking the effort to speak with us like this. We appreciate it from uh, from inside uh, your uh, wardrobe or whatever. Uh, I want to ask you, though, um, we see uh, uh, the Ukrainian uh, citizen, the people standing up. It's it's very impressive. What will happen when the Russian convoy finally arrives in Kiev? What will happen then? So I do have very much praise and, and trust in the Ukrainian army. Uh, they did prove that uh, the Putin's plans uh, to invade uh, the city of Kiev, the capital, in just one day have basically failed. Uh, as of now, they do try to get closer to the city, but that is not uh, actually working out for them. Uh, you must have heard the reports about a 60-kilometer convoy standing uh, north from Kiev. It hasn't moved a slight bit uh, in the last three days, uh, precisely because of the efforts by the Ukrainian army. So uh, we do believe that Kiev is, is uh, well, probably the best protected city in Ukraine right now, and we shall do everything in our power to make sure that it stays under Ukrainian control. But for that, we, of course, do need support from uh, all civilized world. Everyone seeing uh, what uh, is happening to us today should just stand up to, to the evil that we have encountered here in Ukraine. And we are asking for support from, from everyone who uh, just cannot accept uh, that this can be happening in in uh, in this planet in the 21st century do you foresee uh, ukrainian citizens fighting russian tanks sometimes literally with bare hands uh I, I do see this amazing courage on the side of my countrymen and women. Uh, some of them are fighting with their literally bare hands. Sometimes they just come over to the Russian soldiers uh, who are actually extremely demotivated. They cannot really explain what they're doing here. Lots of uh, the Russian soldiers are just uh, giving up. They're raising the, the, the white flag and they're uh, saying that they, uh, they want to give up. They don't want to fight. They don't understand why they have to kill uh, as civilians. Uh, but uh, And then Ukrainians are showing those uh, amazing examples of, of courage. Uh, they are, uh, well, uh, I've, I've seen students, chemistry students, uh, saying that uh, on, on Facebook, uh, say, okay, we are just students, we don't know how to fight, but we are good in chemistry, we can make Molotov cocktails. Uh, so, so students, all the ladies, they're 
making Molotov cocktails with which they are blowing up Russian tanks. Uh, and um, so, and that is what you're seeing now is the entrance towards the city of uh, town of Rostomil, which is north of, of Kiev. Uh, I, I believe it has been half destroyed uh, during the, uh, the heaviest battles taking place over there. Now, uh, the Ukrainians did uh, keep the control of, uh, of that town. Uh, so I, I do see this amazing courage on the side of my, my countrymen and women. Uh, but I'm, I'm talking to everyone uh, to the world right now, and I'm asking uh, to support this courage. I'm asking uh, for the world to fulfill the promise of never again allowing for, for such terrible atrocities to happen. Uh, I do believe that this slogan, never again, is, is crucially important. And I'm, uh, well, extremely, uh, let's say, disappointed with the response we are getting so far, because we did get some support for the army, uh, for the Ukrainian army from, from several countries. We do see some sanctions, but that is not nearly enough. So what uh, we are asking of this people of the world uh, who want to help us uh, is, is please do continue to support Ukrainian army. Uh, the, the guys are doing a great job in, in saving thousands of civilians' lives, but they need more support and more, more weapon, more protective gear. We are asking for toughest sanctions on Russia possible. Like Full trade embargo needs to be imposed because every single dollar, every single euro that would go into Russian economy right now would be used to continue killing Ukrainians. And the third thing we're asking for, and I know it is a contested issue in the in the geopolitical debate, but I do believe it's just about respect for, for human decency. It's just please provide us a no-fly zone over Ukraine. Because you can see Ukrainians fighting on the ground and, and actually winning on the ground. Uh, but that is extremely difficult uh, to, to hold those grounds in case Russians continue to bombard our cities and villages from air. And that is why we're asking for no-fly zone over Ukraine so that we can fight fight back and make it a more or less uh, winnable situation for us. Right. Uh, we, we have been discussing this, of course, uh, all the time. I want to ask you, do you have any hopes uh, regarding the talks in Belarus? Well, I do believe uh, that uh, the, the chances are slim. Uh, and uh, you see, the situation here is pretty simple. So uh, the Russians want us dead and we want to be alive. Uh, there is really very little room for compromise here. You cannot be half alive or half dead, right? So uh, I'm, I'm very skeptical about uh, those talks. Uh, furthermore, uh, we do realize now that basically every word uh, Russians are saying is a lie. Every time Putin opens his mouth, he is telling a lie. So I'm just asking all the media outlets to stop, stop, uh, stop showing what he is saying because this is just, just part of his propaganda machine. He's completely delusional. He's completely crazy he's completely out of control and people should not be listening to whatever he's saying because he simply cannot be trusted so i i do see very little uh, in a way of, of those uh, talks i don't see the russians would admit that uh, they are well what they they cl claimed to be the biggest army in the world is actually a disaster in terms of equipment in terms of morale and they will just continue using uh, the best what they can uh, which is uh, firing at uh, ukrainian citizens from air and I I don't see them surrendering in any way possible. And also, I do not see uh, us, Ukrainians, uh, backing off. And I do think that uh, you understand that. Uh, you would never surrender a piece of your territory, right? And and so I don't see us doing that either, right. particularly after uh, what you know, I'll Thank you here. Thank you very much. We have to go to a break. Thank you. Stay safe.